Taking out his third, Delano Apollo out of the season. Driving car number one is Adrian Devereaux, driving for Alan Hodges and Carl Walter. On Thursday, it was revealed that an entity called the Master Cup Manufacturers Association, uh, MCMA, has petitioned the TM Master Cup Series officials to give provisional places on the starting grid of the Kyala Grand Prix to the highest 12 cars and owner points that have road car equivalents. We don't know all the teams involved in the MCMA, but let's assume that this actually happens. The teams that could be given provisional places on the grid include Team Sire USA, the Michelin Suns, Flash Racing, Stana Motor Racing, Owen DeGamo's team, the Xenos Racing, Majestic Motorsports, and I believe James Dalton's team could also be affected because uh, James Dalton has all but confirmed that he'll be rebranding his cars as Bolden Kiowas starting at the Kayala Grand Prix, so we'll have to wait and see on that. The three big names you might have missed in that list include Hodges Walter Racing, Volpe, and Gessler. Those three teams are technically manufacturer teams, but they run cars that are not road cars. Some of the other manufacturer teams aren't very happy with what those three teams have been running all season. The MCMA's members have not been openly declared, but I don't think it takes too much of a genius to figure out who's involved in it. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. On the front row, Adrian Devereaux and Matthias Taub in car number 10, as you see right there. Michael Sykes is trying to make it three wide. There we got someone else going four wide in the a little further back. As they come down into turn one, Luciano Salvaral backs off a little bit. Matthias Taub, the hometown boy, tries to attack Adrian Devereaux already in the first lap. Oh, they came very close to wadding up half the field in the back, but they got away with it. We're going to have a look and now at Mika Turvo in car number 20. He's going four wide into turn one. Watch this. He started all the way back in 20th, and he's going to come flying into one. Almost, uh, looks like almost contact with uh, the 72 car of Kevin Dwyer, and he makes him about 10 spots in the first corner. That's how you pull off a very awesome move and do it clean. It looks like he's uh, going to be in the top 10 after the end of lap one here. Taub in car number 10. The hometown crowd has been uh, pretty enthusiastic about their support for him this week. He's kind of had a, an up and down season and he's been uh, having a couple of very good drives but he's also uh, torn up quite a few cars. He's clearly hoping to do the former here today in uh, front of his home crowd. Here's a pretty pretty sketchy moment in the first lap as well. Kevin Dwyer, Zelda Ashby, that's independent trophy driver. Gaspar D'Souza in the zero. Kurt Pliskin in that purple car all the way almost onto the grass. Uh, that 16 car, but a very sketchy moment there. D'Souza back on track. This is the first run of the year for this uh, orange and black livery of, for Ian Cooper, the 777 car. Uh, this this car is really bright. I know the TV makes things uh, a little bit brighter than they're supposed to be, but that orange really is that bright in person. Uh, this 777 car has been pretty quick this week, and uh, Ian Cooper is uh, taken to this track pretty well. His teammate Scott Bates has also been fairly quick, but he didn't qualify too well. Now here's Troy Adams in the 91 car. This is his second independent trophy run of the year. Uh, he was originally scheduled to run Brands Hatch, but uh, BKR switched uh, Barton Sandy to run that race and moved Troy Adams' his second start back to uh, this race here in Sweden in order to um, have, in order for uh, the team to learn a bit more about the car. And Sandy was a bit more of a trusted development driver. Lewis Kingston running towards the back of the field. He crashed twice in practice. He's been having a, well, to be honest, a disaster of a weekend so far. However, he seemed oddly confident coming into the race, and uh, we believe he may be using Tom Delgado's setup to see if uh, Kingston can have a better run than his, than his uh, qualifying effort showed. He's running, well, 33rd. Not exactly what you want to be doing in a 36-car field. But uh, he... Uh, Kind of trying to get his way through the field left to see how he does with that. Here's Carlos Tanzello, the uh, fourth independent trophy driver in the field. The teammate to make a turbo, car 21. This is his second run of the year. He is battling for 13th place with Yamino Tenchi in that bright yellow car. There's Scott Bates in car number 88 as Donzella runs a little wide, almost onto the sand. Don't want to be there. And he's going on, we're going on board at the uh, 21 car as he's battling with Tenchi through the, this very tricky chicane. Ooh, contact there. Uh, pretty good clean racing there. They don't man they managed to not wad both cars up. Tenshi gets the place in the uh, 25 car. The Japanese driver having a uh, very good uh, uh, season so far, at least as soon as we've gotten to Europe anyway. She started off the season very slowly. It's been a uh, she won her first race last year in Texas. She's been kind of rocketing through the some of the through the field a little bit. Uh, Tenshi's form clearly improving. After three laps, Adrian Devereaux has already built up quite a lead over Matthias Taub, Luciano Savarol, Davina Henton in car number six having a very good start. Leonid Roderick, we'll get to him later. 
There's Turbo up to 12th place, or rather, he dropped a couple positions. Uh, he's, uh, Scott Soiler and Ian Cooper have both gotten by. Tenchi, car 25, also having a good start. You see Gaspar Souza, Kurt Pliskin, 19th and 20th. We'll talk about Pliskin a little bit more later. Uh, this is not really something new. We've seen Devereaux out in front quite a bit, but uh, ever since we've gotten to Europe, his luck has uh, gone, uh, well, sour, really, to be quite honest. Um, Marcus Leonard is running a fantastic eighth place in the underpowered and overfunded Xenos team. Uh, they've not really had too many results. Oh, wow! Great move by Scott Soiler there in the uh, 74 car. Just caught Marcus off guard there. And uh, Marcus is going to have the preferred line here, but soiler has got such a huge run into that corner, I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think Leonard even bothered fighting. I think he's uh, just trying to make it to the first pit stop, and then we'll see what happens. Pretty intense battle here for fourth place. Michael Sykes, Davina Henton, and Arto Kekkonen. Kekkonen, Matthias Taub's teammate. This is one of the first races where uh, Taub has really had the edge over Arto. There's no team orders in that team, so um, Taub just really suited this track. Leonard Roderick having a pretty difficult year. He's lost two engines this weekend, uh, and so he hasn't really had as much running as he would like. Uh, he got scored the, the first ever perfect 70 uh, last season at in same country, but at the Bohuslan circuit. Now here he is a very aggressive racing for seventh place. Scott Stoiler is really beginning to fly through the field as uh, Roderick is doing some very aggressive defending of that position there. Stoiler finally takes the, uh, takes the spot, but uh, Roderick didn't exactly make his life easy, which is what he's supposed to do. Blake Kamphausen is running all the way back in 26th place. Saar has been having a very difficult week in general, and that just puts uh, an end to his race after three laps and uh, probably puts him out of his misery because uh, the Saars have not been terribly competitive here. I just don't think that car suits this racetrack all too well. There's a lot of uh, sudden elevation changes and a lot of bumps on this track, and uh, I don't think the Saar Eagle likes that too much. Back up with Arto Kekkonen in car number nine. Arto is beginning to chase down his teammate, Matthias Taub, in car number 10. Uh, Taub is from Gothenburg in Sweden, and uh, that's exactly where we are. We're near the Gothenburg area, so uh, very much uh, Taub's family and friends are out here, and uh, a lot of the people uh, he used to race with, including Arto Kekkonen. Both of them ran in, I understand, Formula Nordic at the same time uh, for the same team, and here they are in the Master Cup Series, driving for the same team and battling for second place on... Uh, Taub's home turf. Arto tries to have a look, and Arto just ran that way wide. I'm not really sure what he was trying to accomplish there, other than to remind Taub that uh, he was there, and uh, maybe try to force Taub into a mistake, but uh, Taub, very, very focused, uh, at least this week, and uh, not falling for that one. Yulian Asova, last week's surprise winner, running all the way back in 17th place. That just shows you how competitive the series is this uh, today. The Sova won last week from, uh, I believe, 23rd or 25th on the grid or something like that. So, uh, clearly, charging through the field is definitely possible in this series, despite what some people think. Here is uh, Scott Soiler, and oh, Henton's, oh, Henton's around! And Henton's car just dug into the grass and does a series of spectacular rolls! Car number six, upside down, but that's way off the racing surface. Uh, no need for, uh, for no need for a full course yell or anything like that, uh, so anyway, here it is. Scott Soilers gets on the inside of Henton, but uh, despite that series of very scary-looking rolls, Davina Henton, 25 years old, from Woodford uh, in England, just uh, just northeast of London, she didn't appear uh, too disappointed, at least in her interview. But it looks like Henton may have slid it wide. Soiler tried to make a move, didn't uh, got to the side of Henton, and turns the six car into the grass. That's by far one of the most spectacular incidents we've seen, and a very scary one because it took Henton quite some time to get out of the car, but. Uh, she was uninjured in that um, in that series of roles. Scott Bates in car number 88 did not qualify very well, but uh, he was very fast in all the practice sessions, and he seemed fairly confident coming into this race that he would have a good car in the race. So far, that appears to be the case, because Bates has set the fastest lap of the race. Car 88 is on the move. Here is Taub and Kekkonen. They're resuming their battle for uh, second place. Taub, car 10, Arto Kekken in car 9. Arto has a look. This is going to be a pass around the outside. Taub's making him go the long way around. Oh, Taub just loses the rear end a little bit. And Arto goes through into second place. So Taub loses out to Arto Kekkonen uh, early on, but we've still got a long way to go. Here's Michael Sykes sitting behind Luciano Savaral. Sykes has had uh, a couple of endurance sports car races at this track, but I believe those were quite some time ago. So Michael Sykes also has some experience at this track, and 
he's really had the better of Leonard Roderick this weekend by a lot wider margin than we expected. Roderick scored the series' first ever perfect 70 in uh, the same country here in Sweden last year, but a uh, different track, as I mentioned earlier. Sykes, he's had a pretty good uh, season so far, but he just does not have any luck, uh, just doesn't have the luck, really. Now, Gaspar de Souza was apparently watching uh, the round of France because he's rolled the dice and he's pitted early from 19th place. I'm not sure if this strategy will be as effective here, but Alex Harrison's team is certainly hoping that it is. Uh, here's Anthony Griffith. He's back after a week susp after being suspended from the round of France, and it looks like he's that team has learned something from having Jacques Bouvier in the car. Griffith is running 20th, having a very clean weekend, and uh, so far he looks like he has some speed in this uh, 0A car. The Clever Media Tonnerre. Tonnerre uh, is one of the only manufacturer teams that we don't think is actually has any involvement with the MCMA. Here's the other Tonnerre, Kurt Pliskin in this purple and green car. Kurt Pliskin is uh, a little further ahead in 16th place, and uh, people were glad to see him back, but that might be because they don't have to deal with Libby Bell's driving or her attitude, and uh, I don't think Kurt Pliskin's too used to having such a warm welcome in the paddock. Scott Stoidler and Michael Sykes are battling for 5th place. Now, uh, this 74 car is absolutely flying. Stoidler is just carving through the field, and aside from Scott Bates, I believe this is the quickest car on the racetrack right now. So, uh, Scott Stoidler didn't qualify all that well, but uh, he's clearly got some serious speed in this car. But now, Arto Kakinen has caught Adrian Devereaux, who I believe has started slowing down a little bit. Devereaux has uh, turned the pace down a bit, and we've got a battle for the lead unfolding. Devereaux gives Kakinen plenty of racing room as they come down this long front straightaway and into turn one, this 180 degree right hand corner here. And Arto is gonna tr gonna take over the lead, and Devereaux immediately looks like he starts slowing down. He is, does Devereaux have another problem with, the, with that Altair, or is he just saving fuel? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, Arto got around him very easily. I don't. Devereaux did not fight for that nearly as hard as I thought he would. Hmm. Nineteenth place is what we're fighting for right here in this shot, as Anthony Griffith shows that Turn One is the best passing zone on the track by going around Zelda Ashby in the 55 car. Pretty good weekend so far for Griffith. Ashby, not so much, at least by her standards this season. Ashby has been fairly quick uh, so far this season. Another battle here for 22nd place as Tom Delgado loses out to Avery Holtzman in car number 19. Uh, Holtzman will be back in this car for the Cariola Grand Prix. Uh, he was originally scheduled to be in the third car for Black Diamond Racing, but I don't think he's going to be in that car. He's going to be in the 19. Everyone but Gaspar D'Souza, Tom Delgado, and VJ Pushanda pit on lap 9. And the aforementioned Tom Delgado, well, his future and his motivation are supposedly in doubt, but uh, Delgado is the king of saying he'll perform badly for each race, and then when it comes time for the race, he starts performing very well. So, uh, clearly, I think he has mastered the art of PR. Here's Adrian Devereaux in car number one, leaving the pits. Where's Arto Kekkonen? We don't know, because Arto is still in the pits. Uh, Arto has not yet come out of the pit lane. Now here he is coming out, and he's going to lose out big time. Not only to Adrian Devereaux, but his teammate Matthias Tau. Gee, that's some serious pit lane miscues there for the Gessler team. Uh, they pr clearly dropped the ball big time with Arto because he lost a lot of ground. There, here's Luciano Savarol. Adrian Devereaux's teammate lost a lot of ground in the pits. Tom Delgado is into the pit lane at one lap after everyone else. It's going to be a big day for him if he keeps this strategy up. We'll have to wait and see. VJ Pushanda, however, ran out of fuel and coasts back to the pits. That's sort of emblematic of his year. Adrian Devereaux in car number one is still in the lead of the race at halfway. Lap 12 of, or close to halfway, lap 12 of 25. This is a pretty slow lap around this track. It's about uh, close to two minutes. There is uh, second through fourth. Scott Stoiler having still having a pretty good run in that 74 car. Looks like he leapfrogged around Luciano in the pits. Where and there's Luciano Savarol and Leonard Roderick, fifth and sixth place. Marcus Leonard continuing to have a very good run. Ian Cooper up to eighth place. Chris Johans in ninth. Scott Bates in tenth. Michael Sykes had a long, long pit stop. He stalled leaving the pits and had problems restarting. Might have run out of fuel in the. Uh, first stint. That's might have, that could have been why it took him so long, but uh, I don't think that's entirely it. There could be some problems with that car, but uh, well, that's just more bad luck for Michael Sykes that he doesn't need. He's way down in points, but he's one of the probably one of the top five quickest drivers uh, 
driver and car combinations on the circuit right now. Uh, kind of surprised at that. Anyway, battle for fourth place is beginning to un or battle for third place, excuse me, is beginning to unfold here between Arto Kekkonen and Scott Stoidler. And Stoidler is not going to waste any time, it looks like. And Arto's going to try to fight back, but there's there's got to be some huge bump on the inside there. Anyway, Gaspar D'Souza and Avery Holtzman are battling for 17th place. The Zero car is the quickest car on the racetrack. But this is a pretty good battle we've had unfolding here in the midfield. Rene Rekamir in that uh, blue and red car is uh, trying to join in the fun as well. And that's Dan McKay in that black car there as well. So the Tutino of McKay having a fantastic run so far. As now Gaspar D'Souza is trying to hunt down Carlos Donzello in that blue and black 21 car. Dan McKay in car number 20. Here he is running in 20th place in the points. This is an awesome run for the Tutino driver. He's not really had a whole lot of luck this season. And that, well, I was talking about his luck, and immediately after I say that, he loses the engine in that car. That's kind of typical of his season. Uh, he, he's just not had anything go right this year. Uh, Dan McKay from uh, the Toronto area. He's going to drop out of the race in the E-Hill security car. Scott Bates and Ian Cooper, the two EFR boys, doing battle for 8th place. And Scott Bates just dives it in there hard and gets around Cooper, takes him kind of by surprise. Scott Bates in this 88 car of Oklahoma having a fantastic run, and he is clearly going to be hunting down uh, the rest of the pack. This 88 car is flying. Marcus Leonard is still hanging around in 7th place. This is, this is a great run for Leonard, who has not had a whole lot of luck this year either. Uh, he hasn't had speed in the Xenos. Uh, Xenos has kind of poured a lot of money into this project, but it just hasn't had a whole lot of results. Lately, however, it seems like one of their two cars is running very well, but they, they haven't had both cars running competitively in one weekend. Hacker Carroll and Avery Holtzman have gotten by Gaspar D'Souza in the zero, but D'Souza is going to be fighting back. Uh, not going to be able to get it done this time. The battle for 17th is on. It, it, this is really amazing. We've had the best battle on track for the in the look in the lower points area Here's the suit. Oh, Carol slid it a bit and Carol's giving the Souza enough room in the Alex Harrison car to Souza He's gonna have the better line. I think coming down. There he goes De Souza now if they're able to stay side by side uh, De Souza will have the better line into one Packer Carol lets him go They don't want to bring Donzello into the mix, but now De Souza has caught up to Avery Holtzman in 16th place and now the battle is on for 16th. Gaspar D'Souza is hunting down Avery Holtzman as they come down into these very fast S's here. Uh, Holtzman tries to hold up D'Souza a bit more. He's wearing out his tires an awful lot trying to keep the Portuguese driver behind him. D'Souza though, as we look off the back of Holtzman's car, as D'Souza has another look reminding Holtzman that he's there. Uh, Holtzman defending that position as hard as he dares and D'Souza really not able to get a run on this 19 car. Now D'Souza would have probably made a dive bomb move here, but there are local yellows out, and D'Souza wisely abandons the pass. Now we're going to show you why the local yellow is out in just a minute. And that would be smoke building out of the back end of car number 8. Yulina Sova in car 8 has, uh, well, there's a, there's a tur I believe that's a turbo that's gone on that car. So Nasova in the Katsub, out of the race uh, after and after that fantastic win in France. Now, D'Souza and Holtzman resume their battle as they're trying to go, they're still side by side. Now, D D'Souza's pulled alongside of Holtzman. Holtzman trying to hold him off by running, the, tries to run him out a bit, but D'Souza holding on. He's got the position now. Gaspar D'Souza, and now there's Nasova. They're gonna have to deal with the, this smoking car of Nasova, but uh, looks like she's gonna be able to get in the pit. Yes, Nasova has gotten into the pits okay. Adrian Devereaux pits on lap 14. That's way too early. Way, way, way too early. I don't know why they did that. That seems like a mistake. Matthias Taub is now leading the race now in his home. This is hometown, home country, in the TM Master Cup Series, and he is on. Uh, well, he is currently in the lead. There are our bonus points now for leading the most laps. Adrian Devereaux, as we saw, he came out right behind Ian Cooper after that pit stop. But uh, there are points for leading the most laps, not points for leading a single lap. Now here we are with Scott Bates in car number 88 as he tries to chase down Marcus Leonard. And it looks like he's doing that. Uh, Bates, car number 88, having, continues to have a strong run. Gaspar D'Souza pits on lap 15. 
He's got a pretty uh, interesting pit strategy there. Ian Cooper's apparently noticed what D'Souza is doing and pits along with him in car triple seven. I don't know why Cooper's doing that. Luciano Savaral pits on lap 16. Uh, Savaral is not uh, having a very good run so far. He's been slowly uh, slowing down. Rene Rekamir in as well in the 12 car in the Majestic Motorsports car, but he's been sort of in the uh, lower midfield area. Charlie Waters was sent to the back of the grid due to all the chaos he was causing in France. He's racing Dale Roswell in the uh, Freedom for Palestine, car number 22, that silver car back there. Roswell just promoting a very worthy cause, but not exactly having a very worthy run uh, this weekend. He's been sort of outpaced by Holtzman. Roswell, car 22, continuing um, to, well, trying to have a championship hope here, but uh, kind of hard to do it when you're running in 22nd place. Roswell has a run in on Charlie Waters. Waters gives him room, probably a little too much room. I think you could have fit two Dale Roswell cars in between the, in that gap, but never mind. Packer Carroll was also sent to the back of the grid, but as you see right here, he's already fought his way back up into the points. The Maya Soft Volpe, car number two, that uh, fantastic livery there. Avery Holtzman, another fantastic livery. Car number 19, the Ender Construction Omeka BDR3. And right behind them is Carlos Donzello in car number 21, that uh, blue and black Omeka MAO3B. Uh, that is, of course, Fintech's own variation on the Omeka MAO3. But Packer Carroll is uh, playing penalty killer, and he's doing a fantastic job so far, I have to admit. Matthias Taub is in the pits on lap 17. Scott Stoidler is noticing what Taub is doing, brings the 74 car in as well. Arto Kekkonen pits on lap 18 along with Leonid Roderick in car number 4, Scott Bates in car number 88, and Marcus Leonard in the triple 9. All those cars have pit on lap 18, and once again, Tom Delgado stays out an extra lap. That strategy has proven to be fairly effective because it's allowing Delgado to get this extra lap in. Uh, just Go balls to the wall, get a high, get a fast lap in, and then hit the pit lane and see how much track position you can gain. It's looked like it's working so far. Arto Kekkonen's in trouble. That's a gearbox that's gone in the nine car. Arto is out of the race in car number nine after being in contention for a podium and maybe the win, but that was beginning to look a little bit uh, of a long shot. Arto Kekkonen in is out of the round of Sweden after a fantastic start to the race. Very disappointing day for him. Adrian Devereaux is still in the lead of the race, and we're on lap 20 right now, but uh, in the last couple of corners, he suddenly picks up a puncture! Adrian Devereaux is going to have to dive into the pits on lap 20, giving the lead to Matthias Taub. But, um, it's not all, uh, well, this is just kind of sort of a continuation of his rotten luck. You saw the yellow car, number 91, Troy Adams, he's been off the course. Uh, something's gone wrong with that car, along with Luciano Savaral. He's had mechanical problems. We don't really know what, but he lost two laps. They corrected the problem and sent Luciano back onto the racetrack. Matthias Taub in car number 10 is in the lead of the race. Uh, we're waiting for Scott Stoiler to come across the line. There he is in car 74. The uh, Tremwell, the uh, number 74 Tremwell for the Michelin Suns team. It's a brown and silver car. Very distinctive paint job and... Uh, Another very nice livery in this series. It's good that we uh, have cars that are nice to look at. Car number 88, Scott Bates. Now, you want to talk about a beautiful race car, you look at that 88 car, Scott Bates, uh, every time that car is on screen. Mika Turvo in car number 20 in fifth place. Leonard Roderick having a steady day as well. There's Marcus Leonard in sixth place. Chris Johans in seventh. There's Adrian Devereaux in eighth place after that puncture, but uh, at least he can still have a decent points day for the championship leader. Packer Carroll in car number two has gone from a hero from a zero to a hero in one week. He's coming from the back of the grid. He is in the top ten. Packer Carroll putting on a top drive that would probably make him a worthy successor to Alexis Rainsford, who was very good at doing that. Coming from the back of the grid and having and managing to pull out a very good result from it. And uh, he was actually one of the quickest cars in practice. That's not really a huge surprise. You wonder what he could do if he had started where he was supposed to where he qualified rather than starting 35th today. Well, anyway, Anthony Griffith in car number 08 has, uh, well, has a bit of a reputation for being a human ping pong ball. He sort of hit everything there is to hit this season. He's running on 11th. I'd say this is a very good job and very uh, noteworthy for Griffith. Looks like this could uh, turn the page. Hopefully he will uh, stop tearing cars up and start having more runs like this. And that's the kind of thing that leads a driver to TM Master Cup Series stardom. 
It's uh, happened with a lot of drivers in the past, though. Uh, need I remind everyone that Alexis Rainsford, in her rookie season, I think, uh, had similar luck. She hit just about everything there was to hit. She uh, caused quite a few collisions. Mika Turbo in car number 20 is, uh, well, he's also uh, had a bit of a crash-laden uh, beginning to his career. He's in fifth place. He's had a very lonely day, though. Not really a whole lot to talk about with Turbo. Here is Chris Johans in car number 64. He's up to six. This is about the only time his this season that his race hasn't fallen apart midway through, and he hasn't either run into something, blown up, or been hit by something else. Uh, it's been a been a bit of a disaster for Chris Johans this season, but it looks like he's beginning to turn things around with a very solid run today. That's what he needs to do to build up the championship points. Scott Bates is looking at a podium in this beautiful number 88 EFR Journey A90, running here in third ahead of Leonid Roderick, who's. Um, not really having uh, the best of days as far as the car is going. Uh, Roderick's car, it's its good, but just not great. Scott Bates' car, I'd say, it's doing very well. Uh, Scott Bates having, uh, well, I'd say if you're going to run very well here, I'd say that you might be pretty quick at the Carali GP as well. Matthias Taub is back markers in his way with just two laps to go. Charlie Waters in car number 30, that white and red Delano 30 car. And uh, Rene Rekamir in car number 12. They're battling for 25th place. There's nothing to gain for either of them by uh, holding the leader up. I mean, 25th place is very important. I mean, you're going to get a lot of points, you know, if you win the battle for 25th place. You know, like zero. Uh, points only go down to uh, 20th place. Neither of these neither of these guys sat on the pole. They haven't been leading laps. Just let him go already. There's nothing to gain by racing Matthias Taub. Taub, car number 10, trying to get by. Charlie Waters. Waters doesn't give any room. Taub's been hit by Rekimir and Taub is off. Taub and Charlie Waters have gone off the course after contact with two back markers that had no business being in the way. Taub has gone off the course and he could possibly lose this race. His home race, he grew up just a couple of miles from the course here in Gothenburg, Sweden. And I, if I was Charlie Waters and Rene Rekimir, I would really not bother sticking around the track for much longer than necessary because that was just in, that was an insane maneuver. There's Scott Stoidler, second place car coming. Now, Taub's car's probably leaking fluid all over the racetrack and uh, probably shouldn't be allowed to finish, but uh, this is this is the battle for the win between Taub and Stoidler. I don't know why Charlie Waters or Rennie Rekimir felt so inclined they had to ra they had to race Taub as hard as they did. Now, here here's the uh, aerial view. Taub, car 10, trying to get around. Charlie Waters. Now, wa I don't know why Waters is bothered to move, bothering to move over on Taub like that, but Rekimir comes in like a bull in a china shop, runs straight over the back of uh, Matthias Taub, and, and takes him and Waters off the course. So really, what were you doing there, son? He's got one lap to go to hold off Char uh, to hold off Scott Stoiler. Now, this 10 car is probably not handling very well. The suspension's probably all out of alignment, but he's trying to bring this car home. And if he does that, it'll be in front of his adoring home crowd. Rene Rekimir and Charlie Waters probably aren't earning any, any respect for that maneuver there. Even though Taub didn't have to push hard to pass them, he, in fact, Taub didn't have to race them at all. But that still doesn't mean that gives you the right to just sort of take the leader out and block him like an idiot. Charlie Waters and Rene Rekimir should probably uh, apologize to Taub, I think, after this race. Because really, I don't think there was... Uh, that showed a whole lot of respect for your competition there. Scott Stoiler in the 74 car. He has only one career win, and that came several years ago when he was driving for Alan Hodges. He could be staring at his second career TM Master Cup Series win, but I don't think this is exactly... Um, well, I think if you're going to win a race, you win it however you can. He's got one shot to do it right now, and he's got a run on Taub, but unlike France... Taub has enough time to hold off Scott Stoiler in a car leaking fluid all over the racetrack uh, that had been damaged by a couple of clowns driving way over their heads for no good reason. And I think he can be very happy that he has actually made it to the finish and takes home the round of Sweden. A very emotional Taub did not say anything about uh, the contact on the uh, with two laps to go bet between himself, Charlie Waters, and Rene Rekimir. But I think if he had lost the race, there would be uh, a very expletive-laden interview from him. Scott Bates fulfills the promises he showed in practice and winds up on the podium. Good job, Scott. That's a fantastic drive there. Leonid Roderick brings the car home in fourth place after not having a very competitive car all weekend. Looks like uh, he uh, just sort of did what he had to do and get the job done, get a good points day, and that's uh, what makes a champion a champion. 
Same can be said about Adrian Devereaux back in 8th place. Devereaux really didn't have a whole lot to say about his day. He didn't blame anyone or anything. Just said that, he, uh, that his team had a good day. Uh, I don't really know how you can say that after having a puncture take you out of a pretty certain victory, I believe. Packer Carroll, way to be a penalty killer. Back of the grid to ninth place. Fantastic drive for Packer Carroll in car number two. And Tom Delgado in car number 37 winds up in 10th. And Anthony Griffith in 11th place. Jose Luis Martinez backs up his promise he showed in France with a solid run today. Lewis Kingston in car number 17. Terrible car early on. Great car late in the race. Same can be said about Craig Mummert, really, in um, 15th place. Gaspar D'Souza's pit strategy. Uh, well, it really didn't uh, advance his position, really, any, and it didn't drop him through the field. He just kind of stayed where he was. Uh, so, a credible run for the young Portuguese driver. Kurt Pliskin gets a couple of points in the bag in 16th place, and Kevin Dwyer had a difficult weekend, but still gets a single point for 20th place. And here are the TM Master Cup Series driver's points entering the Cryala Grand Prix. Remember, the most points you can gain or lose in that race is 140 because that's a double points race. Adrian Devereaux's points lead, therefore, is not safe because, uh, well, he's not guaranteed a, start in the field, a starting position in the field, and neither is anyone else. As far as it stands right now, everyone has to race their way into the Cryala Grand Prix, uh, assuming that the MCMA doesn't get their way. Arto Kakinen still sits in second. Scott Stoiler having a fantastic season so far. Sits third. Luciano in fourth. Didn't, he hasn't really had any luck in uh, quite some time. Nasova still hanging around in the top ten. I'd watch out for Nasova, Ashby, and Scott Bates. Matthias Taub is a former winner of the Carla GP, and uh, he's got a lot of momentum leading into that race. Martinez having a good season so far. Kingston piling on the points along with Roderick. Henton didn't really have a good day today. Uh, being upside down kind of uh, puts a damper on your points run. Mika Turbo, uh, well, he's an independent trophy car sitting 13th in the points. I'd be liking my chances for Cariola if I was him. Uh, Fintech tend to bring very good cars for that race in general. Marcus Leonard has gone well there. Dale Roswell has two. Kevin Dwyer is on the front row last year. Packer Carroll didn't qualify last year, I don't think. Yamino Tenshi in car 25 has not really had any uh, great runs there. Michael Sykes. We'll be making a second trip to Cariola, and Brian Sendak in car 19. Uh, well, he's listed in car 19 because that's what, what car he scored all those points in. He'll be driving the third Gessler, a teammate to Arto Kakinen and Matthias Taub at the Cariola Grand Prix, so that'll certainly be a, a very interesting thing to watch. Now, now, let's have a look at the Independence Trophy, and no surprise, Mika Turbo's built on his lead, and that Gaspar de Souza has moved into a very solid second. D'Souza, Madrigal, Eicholtz, Barton, Sandy, Carlos Anzello, Dan Lechleiter, and Troy Adams have all run two races each. I wouldn't really be feeling good if I was Carlos Anzello, Dan Lechleiter, or Troy Adams. Uh, if I was any one of those guys, I would need to pick up the pace in my next few independent trophy runs. Greg Woodard, Danny Sauvin, and Cameron Taylor, I think, are still in good shape. They've only run one race. Morgan Hamburg, Brandon LaRoe, Tom Moore, and Chris Allen need to pick up the pace just a little bit. However, all of these 15 drivers you see here will be at the Carrella Grand Prix, along with the only two independent trophy cars who have not made a run yet, Vitaly Karpenko and Ben Atkins. Still, although it looks like Turbo has a big lead, it's a little early to be saying that he's the favorite for the independent trophy. There are still many races to go.